in class either. Can't yawn, can't sneeze, can't cough. All you can do is breathe. That's a joke, people. That's a joke. Don't go home and tell your mom I told you you couldn't do anything when you're I don't have somebody do that. Statistics. Make sure you understand what the word statistics means. It has a double meaning. Statistics has a double meaning. One is it is a parameter in statistics with the sample. That's one. You don't see that right here. And the other is the grandfather um, definition, which is basically the, cal the collection, the calculation, and the interpretation of data. It's as simple as that. Now, you can put all kind of uh, pinky words on it if you want to, but that's what it is. The collection, the calculation, and the interpretation of data. So, right now, if you have a book or you printed out your book, you need to highlight that definition. Or, you need to take your handy dandy pencil and notebook and write it and put a star beside it because that is a test question. And that's what I do for chapters one and two. I go through chapters one and two and I pick out the stuff that's important. And then when we get to chapter three, we get on the board and we do math. Um, so far I'm on page five. Those of you that have a book, and page five is not, there we go. There we go, population and sample. Make sure you know what a population and sample is. Population would be Anderson County. That would be a population. A sample would be here at the Anderson campus, taking a survey of every student here at the Anderson campus. The sample would be Anderson campus. The sample is usually what than the population? Yeah. Smaller. Why? Well, that's why it's called a sample. Um, why would you use a sample? Why don't you just take a survey of everybody in Anderson County? Time and money. So, the whole purpose of statistics and probability, this is the whole purpose, is to take a sample and predict the what? Population. That's what it's all about. <clears throat> Layman's terms, you want to take a sample and predict what the population is going to do with that sample. Is it feasible? Yes, it is. Because we're all, we're all creatures of what? habit and most of all if this if this room was surveyed it's pretty much going to predict what the campus so population there would be Anderson campus the sample would be math 120 at 8 o'clock on Monday and Wednesday okay or I could make a group sample which would be all of my classes so I could say that the population is the Anderson campus but the group sample is all of my classes, and that's six classes times 30, 150 to 180 students. Okay? That would be a sample. Sample statistics. The things that we use in a sample calculation is called statistics, usually with a little s. So that's the difference, and they're going to talk about that here in a minute. Population, formulas, calculations, interpretation is called parameters. All right, so population equals parameter, sample equals statistics with a little s. Statistic with a big S is the first definition, and they're probably going to talk about that next. Let's, there it is right there. Now, one thing that I do usually, it says a statistic is a numerical summary of a sample. Numerical summary can be a collection of data, it can be a calculation of data. Uh, five people have white cars, okay? Five people, that's a statistic with a little s. It means that's the sample at Anderson campus. Where 2,500 people at the at Tri-County Tech have white cars, that would be a parameter with a little p, meaning the population. It could also mean a formula. One of the things that you're going to find out, and handy dandy transparency, there we go, and this thing gets weird. I was teaching yesterday 
in calculus and my trig class, and I found out that this thing has a, when I'm recording, it has a delay. So I'll write an equation on the board, and about three seconds later, it'll show up. Very annoying. I'm trying to get the help desk to fix that, but very annoying. Uh, statistics are usually in alpha, regular alphabet. Uh, X, X bar, S, standard deviation, and so on. But your uh, parameters are going to be Greek letters. Mu, and write that down under, well, where's parameters? Let me, um, this on the bottom, okay. Your, your mu and sigma are what you're going to see a lot of. There's also summation, but we don't do that. So these are your parameters, meaning population, and these are your statistics, meaning um, sample. Now, what, why do you have to learn this? It's not a big deal because the formulas are the same. Why do you need to know? Well, so you don't show your ignorance. And I hate to say it like that, but if, let's say that you graduated college, you're in your career, whatever it is, let's say you're a nurse or you're a pra nurse practitioner or whatever, and you're a department head, okay? And you go to a meeting for all department heads at AMIA. And it's held at this place at AMED, and there's a hundred people there because there's a hundred department heads. And the people above the department heads are given a big presentation about AMED. And they're using names like Sigma and Mu, and they're doing statistics. Then you know if they give you Mu and Sigma, you're talking about the what? The population the big picture. If you're talking about X and X bar and S, you're talking about what? The sample. So if they're giving you a presentation on the board and you see X bar, then you know, okay, that's the sample. So when you go up and ask questions, you don't go up there and say, I don't know what this X bar means. Then you'll sound like an idiot as a department head. Versus if you go up there and say, I see that the sample is a little bit off of the population mean. Why is that? You don't sound what? Stupid. Stupid. Okay? That's why you need to know these things. Is anybody going to walk up to you and ask you to find the mean of the blah, blah, blah? They may. They may not. But when you're in a department meeting or a division meeting or a bigger than division meeting, bigger than that, a president's meeting or a president's report, you need to know your stuff before you open your what? Mouth. And that would be a good example of knowing the difference between a population calculation and a sample calculation. So the reason for this is so you don't look stupid in the part of me. That's the reason for it. And so you know in your calculations which one's which. The formulas are going to be the same. Okay? So hopefully that will help you out there. And that is a test question because um, I do want you to know the difference between the two. So anyway, and I'm going to pull this down. And there is parameter, and that's it's already said that. So you need to highlight parameter and statistic with a little less. Qualitative and quantitative, that's self-explanatory. That's, that's a test question. On any standardized test, anything having to do with statistics, that is a question. Qualitative means quality. Quantity means what? Quantitative means quantity. You've all heard the expression, quality not what? Quantity. Well, that's basically what it is. The quality of a product, uh, the quality or the characteristics of a person, blondes versus brunettes, blue eyes versus brown eyes, uh, white skin versus tan skin, flip-flops versus tennis shoes. All that's qualitative data. 
because you're measuring the statistic, I meant the statistics, the characteristics of a group of people versus their height, their weight, their age. Then you moved into what? Quantitative. Quantitative, qualitative data. How many people in here are male versus female? What is that? Qualitative. How many people in here are 21 years age of old? That's quantitative. Okay? So make sure you know that. Just remember, your qualitative data is your colors. Just think of colors. If you think of colors, then you'll think of colors, flip-flops, shoes, hair, eyes. You see what I'm saying? Qualitative data. Quantitative data has anything to do with what? Numbers. Okay? That's a test question. And I know some of y'all have been through this in high school with your probability and statistics. I'm sorry. Okay, now I get into this a little bit because a lot of people don't understand the difference here. So I want you to write those two definitions down, and then I'm going to explain what these two definitions mean. Because if I was to give you, if I was to give you a piece of paper and say this is a test on chapter 1.1, and tell you to write the definition or tell, explain to me the difference between continuous and whatever the other one is, discrete data, 90% of you wouldn't have a clue, okay? Unless you've had it before, and you probably still don't understand it. So I go through a little, I take off and go to the whiteboard here and um, show you what the difference is. It might be better if I type it until they figure out what's wrong with my system. I think it's something, I think it's a configuration problem between the software that runs this thing and the software that runs the whiteboard. I think it's some kind of configuration problem. <laughs> Sorry, somebody turned the volume up on this thing. Yep, I think they turned it up. Yeah. Usually I put it up here because I found that the microphone helps with the background noise. So, if I use the microphone, the background noise is decreased a little bit, so that's why I'm using it. Okay, not that you can't hear me. I know everybody can hear me. Now, let's take our handy-dandy whiteboard, and let's move it over here, and I'm going to write some things up here. Discrete. Discrete has a lot to do with rational numbers. Okay? Rational numbers are those numbers that can be located, that can be predicted. All right? What the heck does that mean? Well, in our number system, there are numbers that you can predict or locate on a number line, such as, and I'll put little brackets here so y'all can see that, two, one-fourth, uh, three over two, negative six, Point three 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 three, and there's supposed to be a line over that, but I don't have to draw it in a minute. And point one two three one two three one two three. I'm trying to put every kind of number there are: negatives, positives, uh, fractions. I'm trying to show you what what I'm trying to talk about. Uh, the square root of twenty five. I can't put that on there, so I'll put 25 to the 0.5 power. 
That's the same as square root of 25. And put my little bra bracket. Okay? Now, the discrete numbers go with the rational numbers. In other words, numbers that can be predicted. Can you tell me what the next number is with 2? Yeah? 0. 0.0. Can you tell me what the next, what, what 1 fourth is? Yes, it's 0. 0.25. What's the next digit beside the 0. 0.25? 0. See what I'm getting at? All right. Uh, what about the next digit in 0. 0.333333? What's the next digit? Three. It's predictable. You can tell me what's going to come next. Okay? What about point one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three? You know the next digits are one, two, three, because they're repeating. Versus your continuous data. Continuous, if I spelled it right, is irrational numbers. And the irrational numbers are the opposite of rational. They cannot be predicted. I need y'all to get your calculators out or your phone calculators. It doesn't matter. I mean, you don't have to do anything special. I just need you to type in some numbers, okay? They cannot be predicted or located. Now, what do you mean located? Well, you're going to see it has a lot to do with the prediction. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put parentheses and I'm going to put pi equals and I'm going to put it's 2 to the 0.5 power equals and I'm going to put 7 to the 0.5 power equals. Now I want somebody to give me pi, give me 10 digits, go slow, it's 3.141593, or 15, okay, I'm sorry, 1592, keep going, 654, that's all you got, all right, give you $100, tell me what that next number is, unless your calculator can tell you, you can't tell me, why, because there's no what, there's no pattern, See? How about 2 to the 0.5 power? Somebody give me that. 1.4, oops, sorry. 1.41. Is that it? Okay. Unless your calculator goes further, you can't tell me the next digit because there's no what? If there's no pattern, you can't predict it. If you can't predict it, you can't what? Locate it on a number line. Why can't you locate it on a number line? Because there's no end to it. It keeps what? It keeps going. So you can go 3.14, 3.141, 3.142. In other words, it keeps moving. It doesn't stop. That's why these numbers that I'm putting up are always those numbers that is kind of like to a computer try to win tic-tac-toe. Why can't you win tic-tac-toe? Because that's one of those games that you just play because you're bored and there's no skill to it. You see what I'm saying? Some of y'all see it, some of y'all don't, some of y'all just sitting there. Okay, yeah, board games. Some of them, huh? Yeah, they try to get play tic-tac-toe. They got that from Star Trek. Star Trek, in one of the original series of Star Trek, the computer took over the Enterprise and they tried to get it to figure the last digit of pi or play tic-tac-toe. I can't figure out which one it was. But it's the same thing. If, you, if I ask you to find the last digit of pi, after about 10 pages, you would be, you'd quit. Because it takes you about 10 pages to get about seven digits. All right? Past the decimal. So after about 10 pages, I know y'all, some of y'all would quit. And then there'd be one person who'd take 15 pages, and then they'd quit. Because 15 pages will give you about 12 digits. And then you'd say, bump it. All right. So what about 7 point or seven to the 0.5 power? Somebody give me that one because I don't 2.57 or what is it? 6.45. 9. 
3111. Now somebody could go out on a limb and say the next digit is one, but I wouldn't put money on it because there's no pattern. So that's the difference between discrete and continuous, and it's the difference between rational and irrational. And I guarantee you somebody in here has gone through three years of high school math and didn't know the difference between rational and irrational. Now you do. It's the same as discrete and so discrete would be anything in science or statistics having to do with what? Counting. I told y'all about sneezing, didn't I? Okay, don't do it anymore. Alright. Then what would what's the opposite of counting? No, close. Measuring. Let me give you an example. Let's say that there's a, I don't know where a fire hydrant is, but so let's say there's a fire hydrant down there at the bottom of that pole down there. And I brought in a box of measuring devices. What do you mean measuring devices? Well, some of them are yardsticks. Some of them are rulers. Some of them are measuring tapes. Some of them are measuring tapes with a digital readout window right above it. Y'all seen those? You pull the measuring tape out and it reads the distance for stupid people. I'm sorry, for people that can't read the, uh, okay? And some of them have little marks that have each little increment because you can't read the measuring. So they put all these little numbers. And then you got the, the carpenter's folding type ruler. Y'all seen those? They're old, but carpenters, all kinds of different. So I bring in a box of those, and I tell everybody in the class to go down there and measure the height of that fire hydrant, and come up here and write the answer on the white board, write the height on that board there. How many different answers would I get? Oh my gosh, I would get 30 different answers. Why? Because 10 of y'all would just say three foot because you don't know how to read the, the measuring tape. Okay, and you would say three foot. Two or three of y'all would go out there and kick around the bottom of the uh, fire hydrant and find out where it meets the water pipe, and then you would measure from there. Three or four of you, too lazy, you wouldn't even kick around it. You just measure from the top of the, the top of the, what do you call that stuff out there? Mulch. And you just, two and a half feet, when it's really like three feet, because you have to kick down and find the, all right? You see where I'm going with this? And five or six of y'all that actually took it seriously would read the tape and you'd get, okay, that's three and three eighths, and then the person right next to you would say three and a half, three and a half, or three, three feet, five inches, or three feet and a half inch. In other words, you would get totally different. Why? Because you're measuring. Versus, what if I told you to go out to the out to the parking lot and the gate shut, we shut the gate, let's say we shut the gate, nobody comes in, nobody goes out, and I tell you to count the number of cars, cars, that means non-SUVs, that means non-motorcycles, that means non-trucks, issue, I meant cars, and I told you to count the number of cars that's in the parking lot, excluding SUVs, excluding motorcycles, and excluding trucks. How many different answers would I get? I wouldn't get different answers. I would get the same answers. Why? You're counting versus what? Measuring. So when you when you get asked this, and you're going to be asked this two or three times on the test, because this is a very important question. When you get asked this, if I tell you to measure the height of a tree, you'll tell me it's what? I saw that. That was a yawn. That was a yawn. I saw it. You get you yawn two more times, I'm going to throw you out of here. All right? What is measuring a tree? I just told you. Measuring. What is it? It's continuous. Counting eggs in a basket. It's great. Now, everybody says, oh, that's easy. But when I put it on test, you'll get it wrong. So, y'all figure that out. But that's the difference between discrete and continuous. And you would be surprised on how many people don't know the difference between the two. Okay? So that's that. So make sure you make a note of it, put stars beside it, because that's 
I know at least two or three questions. I give you two or three questions, and it's simple, multiple choice. Is it continuous or is it discrete? And for some reason, y'all don't get it right. I don't know why. I'll try to make it simple and y'all screw it up. But anyway, hopefully this class is special because y'all did what y'all were supposed to. So hopefully y'all will get them all right and prove me wrong. Okay? All right. Next thing. And that's where they're telling you here. Now, let's read the definition they give you. Is a quantitative variable that has either a finite number or possible values of a countable number or possible values. The terms countable means that the values result from counting such as 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. A discrete variable cannot take on every possible value between any two possible values. I think I go with mine. A, a continuous variable, this ought to be good, is a quantitative var variable that has an infinite number of possible values that are not countable. A continuous variable may take on every possible value between any two values. Tell me how many numbers are between 0 and 1. Infinite. That's continuous. What do you mean? I only know of 1. 1 half. Yeah, what's between? Think of wrenches. Okay? I didn't say wretches. I said wrenches. Okay? Wrenches. Some of you guys that have tools, some of you women that might have tools. How many wrenches you have between zero and one inch? There's a lot of them. There's a quarter, there's three eighths, there's seven sixteenths, there's one half, there's nine sixteenths, there's five eighths, there's three quarters, eleven sixteenths, three quarters, thirteen sixteenths, seven eighths, fifteen sixteenths, and one inch. Okay? All of those wrenches are between zero and one. Now, you can actually get other wrenches that are between those. Nobody ever uses them, but you can actually do that. And what you, how do you get them? You take the 3 eighths and you divide by 2. You take the 7 sixteenths and you divide by 2. You take the 1 quarter and divide by 2. You take the 3 quarters and divide by 2. You divide by 2 and divide by 2 and you keep, it's called interpolation, you keep getting different numbers. And the numbers between 0 and 1 are 2 and 3 or 4 and 5 are infinite. There's infinite amount of numbers between those two numbers. And that's the difference between discrete and continuous. And everybody feels good about themselves, right? So you don't have to put smokestacks on your four-cylinder truck. All right. <laughs> you ever seen that before? It doesn't look good. It doesn't sound good either. But people that put too much facts on their truck are weird anyway. Sorry. It's a fact. I can't get the next page to come up. That's great. Um, what's the purpose for smokestacks while we're talking about it? Why the computer can't? Somebody tell me what the purpose for smokestacks are. Huh? No, I'm talking about the original purpose. Smoke. Well, think about it. In the 1950s and the 1940s and 50s, when they started making these BA trucks, all right, to transport things, where was the exhaust? Under. And what did we not have in the 50s and 60s very much in cars? At air conditioning. So how was you, how did you have air conditioning in the 50s and 60s? You what? You rolled down the window. So everybody had their windows rolled down. You pull up to a red light beside one of these BA trucks, and what, what happens? You die of, what do you call it, carbon monoxide poisoning. So what did they do to divert the fumes from these BA trucks? What did they do? They put them on spoke stuff. That's the original reason for smokestacks. Don't believe any of this horse crap about horse power. It makes it better. It makes it faster. You're an idiot. <laughs> the original reason for smokestack was to take the smoke out of the cars at a red light. That was the original reason. So, if you know any of these people that have smokestacks, it doesn't add up. 
Okay? And we still don't have anything. So this is great. Let's see if I can hit the refresh button. I hit the refresh button. Uh, you got anything on yours? It went crazy. Well, believe it or not, I've never had this happen before. It's Bush's fault. It's all Bush's fault. Okay. Well, we'll just sit here and talk about current events. I'm kidding. Somebody get offended. write stuff down. I can still use the computer. I need to start thinking. I need to bring a book class every once in a while. Thank you. Okay. Make sure you read page 10. That's the uh, that's not a test question but I want you to read it. It's a, the brown box right there. The different levels of measurement. There's the nominal level, the ordinal level, the interval level and the ratio level. All I want you to do is read over those and maybe write them down in your notes. Be aware of them. I usually don't give you a I usually don't give you a test question on those, but I want you to know them. No, I've already said them one time. I don't repeat myself. Nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. It's on page ten. Somebody tell me when the internet comes back up, please, because I don't like doing this. Um, see, the phone's a brain tumor. It's not a tumor. That comes from uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and what's that? Kindergarten cop. It's not a tumor. On page 16, I told you I was a movie nut. I'm sorry. I can tell you a lot of quotes out of movies. I'm, I love movies. On page 16, observational. Observational study versus a designed experiment. You ever seen these videos of people, whether it's on a commercial or whether it's on TV, of people being recorded while they're sleeping? Sleep apnea. You ever seen those? It's night, night vision, and you watch the person turn over and turn flips and do all that and wake up and lay back down and you know you're saying y'all ever do anything <laughs> okay you say okay one person out of 30 good all right well anyway what is that is that an observation or an experiment it's an observation because you're not doing anything <laughs> it's an observation you're not doing anything you're not controlling anything now, some people say you're controlling it because you're watching it. No, you're not. You're not controlling it. <laughs> What's so funny? Come on, share. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, y'all leave, okay? You don't make fun of people in this classroom. <laughs> All right. What is an experiment? An experiment is putting a rat in a maze and putting cheese different parts of the maze. That's an experiment. Why? Because you're controlling the experiment. Now, okay, sneeze again you have to leave. If you put a rat in a maze and you don't do anything, what is that? Observation. What if I give, what if I split the, split the class into two groups 
and I give you all red pill, and I give you a blue pill. The red pill, you get out of the matrix. No, I'm sorry. The red pill, I tell you, is this super duper drug that makes you lose 10 pounds a week. And then I tell the, I don't tell the blue people, I tell them the same thing and send y'all off to your homes. You're supposed to take the pill once a day and do whatever you want to do. And I come back and the people in group A lost an average of 10 pounds a piece and the people in group B lost an average of 8 pounds a piece in the sugar pills. Okay? Is that an experiment or an observation? It's an experiment because I'm controlling it. Alright? If you control it, if you have any input into the observation, it becomes an experiment. That's the difference between the two. That's on page 16. No, I'm not going to do 17 on it because like that. Uh, census, everybody knows what a census is. If you don't, don't tell anybody. All right, page 22 and 23. What is a random sample? A random sample is me putting everybody's name on a piece of paper that's the same size piece of paper, folding it the same way, putting it in a fishbowl, mixing them up, and then picking one number out, or picking one name out. Why is that a random sample? Because everybody has the same one chance of being picked. And that's what you need to remember about a random sample, those words. Everybody has the same chance. So what about... Uh, Well, you couldn't really, you couldn't say throwing a dart at a wall with balloons is a random sample because you're not going to throw up in the top right hand corner, you're going to throw what? Straight ahead. So that's not a random sample. But another random sample, basically anytime you put everybody's name in a fishbowl, a hat, or whatever, that's kind of a random sample. What about me uh, putting seat? Seat numbers or like row one, seat one, whatever. Putting assigning a seat number to each seat and putting those seat numbers in a hat is that a random sample? Yes. Yes, because everybody's got the same chance. Okay. So random sample. Make sure the only difference between a random sample and a simple random sample is a simple random sample has to do with a group. So instead of putting your names in a hat. I would put row one and a half, row two and a half, row three and a half, row four and a half, row five and a half, row six and a half, row seven and a half, row eight and a half, row nine and a half, row ten and row eleven. And instead of picking one person, I'm picking what? A group. That's the difference. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna test you on simple simple random sample. The random sample is a test question. Okay? You may see that. No young. Anybody we go on twice, you get close. Did you ask your dad about going to Six Flags? What did he say? He didn't say anything. He's talking about some I think I know who that was. Wanna stay quiet? Tell him that that the one that I went with was my ex. I don't know if he knows that or not. I don't know if he knows I'm divorced now. Yeah, he does. How did you find that out? Uh, <laughs> he stopped me on Facebook. He's a pervert. All right. Stratified sample. Did he tell you about the raccoons? He didn't tell you about the raccoons? Okay. Stratified sample is another sample that has to deal with uh, I can't believe you stopped my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> stratified sample. That's group. A stratified sample would be like a, if you go to uh, a voting precinct, 
What kind of people are going to be at a voting precinct? There's two kinds of people. No. That's a good answer. Republican and... Well, what about independent? Yeah, there'll be one person there that's independent, all right? But uh, the rest of them, 90% is going to be Republican and Democrat, all right? Do I agree with that? No. If you want to know the truth about it, I wish there was five parties. I wish there was six parties. Yeah. Yeah, they are, and they're on their way to doing it. But I'm not going to go there. In, in my opinion, one party is ruining the country more than the other. That's just my opinion. All right. Stratified, I told you that was like grouping. Yeah. A cluster sample would be like a state, like where a voting precinct would be like stratified. A cluster would be like a county precinct. In other words, a county voting, the way the county votes versus the way that a precinct is voting. Stratified versus cluster. Cluster is a little bit bigger. Okay? Oh yeah, systematic. Systematic would be like picking the seventh person, every seventh person in the class I pick to make an A in the class. Alright? I'm just going to give them an A. Alright? That would be systematic. Every seventh person I pick out of the phone book would be systematic. Uh, anything showing a what? A pattern is systematic. That's a test question. Systematic is a test question. Convenient sample is the least accurate. Convenient sample would be like I'm working at a radio station that, that uh, plays predominantly classic rock music and asking people on, on the air, how many of you out there like rock music? Why is that a convenient sample? Because most people that are listening to my station like what? Rock music. That would be a convenient sample. Usually convenient samples are usually not the best way to go. What's the best way to go? Random sample. Random sample is the best way to go. That's why if I gave you a project to do, which I really don't want to, but you're going to have to one of these days. Um, go out and find that would be a good thing it is election year I could give y'all a project about the election that would be a good thing it might count for a test book I think about that I think about doing that that would be good and that way people would learn more about the election I think about doing that but a random sample would be best let me give you an example. What if I gave you a project to go out and do? Is the internet back up yet? Okay. Well, it says this page can't be displayed. If what? Okay. If if I decided to go out and ask questions about the election, and I wanted to go out in the parking lot, would that be a random sample? Kind of. Yes, it would be because unless I picked all females, or I picked all males, then it would be a random sample. But if I pick, if, you know, I'm not going to pick every fourth person. A systematic random sample is not bad. It's not bad at all. In fact, some in a case like that, a systematic random sample would be better than a random sample. Because a random sample, it'd be hard to do, you know, coming out of the door. But a seventh person or a tenth person out of the door would be better because it's coming out of the door. You see what I'm saying? A random sample would be least perfect there or less usable there because you might be tended or you might be led to pick a certain person versus a systematic random sample. So a case like that, a systematic random sample would be better than a random sample. Okay? Does it matter? Yes, it matters, but between the systematic and random, it really doesn't matter. The, the reason you would do a systematic is mainly for convenience, to keep it, keep it level. In other words, not be biased. We all have a natural tendency of bias, okay? We all do. Um, a lot of the pollsters, what, what is very 
common right now on the news. The election. And what goes with the election? No. Polls. Let me ask you a question. Do you notice anything interesting about the polls? This is statistical. But do you know any do you notice anything interesting about the polls versus the rallies for Clinton and Trump? I'm sorry, what? Exactly. The media polls are showing that Hillary's winning the election. But the rallies are showing what? That Trump is bringing in more people. Now, people are having a problem with that. Because if Hillary was winning the polls, then why isn't Hillary bringing in the people? Make you think. Maybe we ought to do a project on that. But that's a statistical question. People are questioning what? The polls. People are questioning the polls because the polls are not showing what's happening in the real world. And they're having a problem with that. A lot of people are having a problem with that. Can statistics lie? It depends on who's, who's collecting the data. If I want to go out here and show that people at Anderson campus are drunkards, I could do that. I could do it in a heartbeat. All I would have to do is question most of the guys that come out of the door. Okay? Because the, 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 sorry, the ones that are most likely to drink are the guys versus the women. And I know that because I'm a math teacher. Okay? That's the ones that, so if I go and I do nothing but guys that come out of the front door at Tri-County Tech, I could prove that Tri-County Anderson campus is full of drunks. All right. So what does that mean about the polls? If I want to prove that Hillary Clinton's going to win or Trump's going to win, all I have to do is poll what? Poll the people that I think are going to vote for Clinton or Trump. Now I would really suggest if you want to learn anything about statistics right now, now is the time to do it because it's right in front of you. One of the biggest things of the year is the election. And a lot of statistics. What time is it? Because y'all are getting fidgety, okay? I still got six minutes, okay? So chill out. Um, really a good time to focus in on the election because that's your statistics at work. You see your bias. You see your collecting of data. You see your margin of error, and then you see what's happening in the real world, and you compare it to what's going on with the polls. If the polls don't line up, then somebody's what? Somebody's lying. All right, everybody make a note. Page 34 is where we're stopping. And somebody tell me what section that is, because so I just closed your notebook. What section is that? Okay, so we're in 1.4, so we covered pretty much chapter one today. I've got a couple of sections. So what does that mean we're going to do Monday? Probably finish chapter one and finish chapter two. Okay? Um, does anybody see anything with the internet right now? The intranet is probably working. Hold on. What are y'all doing? Y'all want to sit down, please? That's rude. Yeah, I've tried to say it like Bon Quick Quick and I just can't do it. <laughs> I will cut you. Okay, I guess it's not working either. Alright, I just count everybody here today. Uh, continue to work. Okay, now you should be able to start your homework on chapter one. Uh, we're, we're in 1.4, so if you want to work on 1.4, if you just want to work to 1.3, that's good. That's not a big deal. Just go ahead and start working, and y'all have a good weekend. Now you can stand up and leave. It's called professionalism. Oh yeah, let's, let's uh...
We need to send some Why stuff to, well, I can't do anything now. Do we need to just get in contact with the um, IT desk? No, when did you add the course? Like last night. I was a, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, send me an email this weekend or whenever it gets back up. Send me an email. Say, please send me handouts, blah, blah, blah. And I just added at the last minute, so I'll remember, and I'll send you I'll send right. everything, okay? Thank you. All right. Sorry the internet went down. I know, it's my fault. Just blame it on me. All right. Yeah, and y'all have a good weekend. You too. Y'all, uh, can somebody prop the door open so students don't have to open it to the end of that? Flood in Louisiana and Bush isn't Yeah, but they still blame him. Yeah. How's it going? Well, all right. well, we ain't got no internet. And that's not a good thing. Because I do my class on the internet. Uh, I'll figure out something. Let me, first of all, fix some call downstairs. Find out what's up. I'm, I'm, I need the internet. What's up? Well, uh, I can't have classes. Hold on, Stuart. You've got the server, call phones are still acting. We can't get through. Okay. So, I'm not sure how long some people are taking this, but that's what's going on. I can't work in this environment. Okay. How am I supposed uh -huh. to work in this environment? I need a drink. That's what I need. All right. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye. She says it's... She says right now it looks like it's us. Those phones aren't working. It's a conspiracy. It's Bush's fault. I mean, you got internet? Nothing right now. See if you can, I mean, if you can show me something 
But right now, I can't even... I mean, the only internet I got is through my phone. I wonder if I could... No, I can't do wireless on this machine. wireless on my phone to get to the internet. Not here, I don't know. Oh, did you send me that, you Miss Lindsay? Okay, did you get yours to come up? Well, we're just screwed, aren't we? Let's see what I can get up here. I don't think I can get anything. If y'all can't get anything. Nope. I can't use my phone because I don't know if this thing has wireless uh, capabilities or not. I guess I could go to the control panel. No, that's not going to be connected. Good morning. You got something to come up? It is because it's still a laptop. Is it? What'd you get? You are kidding me. And it does everything a laptop does? I need one of those. Mine's too big. My laptop's too big. I'm going to get one of those. Okay, it's going to be a mouse pad, though. I have to get a wireless mouse. I can't stand on this. Hold on. Password that you you said you went through forgot your password and you said it. Okay, we'll try your old password. Didn't do it. Okay, now do forget password. I've never seen that before. Okay. Let me see this. Come up here. Mm 
Well, so since she said the computer is working, go here. Good God. and send it to your email. Can you get your email there? Mm -hmm. And go through it, leave it there. Go through to your email. And do what it says, and it'll work after you reset your email. I don't know why. I think I sent you that email back, didn't I, to change your password? what it said, reset password. Oh my gosh, I love that, that laptop. I'm gonna go get one after class today. See, I'm one of these people, I like to have a keyboard. I don't give a crap about a keyboard on the screen. I keep standing there. This little black dog. Mine's too big. Mine, mine's got a screen like this. I got to really? keep it at home. I use it as a desktop. Mm -hmm. I need something like this because a tablet's too small for me. Yeah. And a laptop. My laptop is too big, so I just leave it at home. I need something like this. Yeah, see, I, have to, I got this thing, which is. I don't like it. It's too tiny. Mm -hmm. get, last night I was trying to do some math on it. It's like zoom in. <laughs> Okay, let me look and see what my, I got something for my email last night. Let's look and see what it says. Did you ever go through and register? You did register, but after you registered, you didn't register. Okay, so it won't let you in. That's all. Seeing something. Let's see. That's you. What did I see? Give me a second. Here it is. For your information, in case any of your students are experiencing this error message. Tried to go back in. How many days later? Like, and it wouldn't let you. In. Okay, something, something like. Hold on, let's try it on here. Yeah, I couldn't sign in just going straight through to. I had to do it no, try it now. It may took. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm a guy. You know I can't do two things at one time. See if it works now. It may take. It may take it some time to work. Okay, 
Okay, it didn't work, but are you in Firefox? Yeah, I've got one. Okay, try that. Try it and after you do such a press, I don't know. I'm trying anything I can to get you in there. Firefox. Right yeah, there. I couldn't get Chrome to work at all. Okay. And you say you couldn't log in to this website? No, not when I went straight to the website. But I you went through you went through Blackboard yeah. and you got in there. Uh -huh. What did it you need to change your password through the website? Well no, it let me on and it signed me on, but the course wasn't on there. And I even searched for the course and everything and couldn't find it. I've I've never this is the first semester I've had this much trouble. I don't know what they're doing. See, when I started using Course Compass back in 1997, I was letting the students enroll. Didn't have any problems. Yeah. And I told them when they did this, it was two years ago when they took off Jumpstart and they did this, I said, y'all are asking for trouble. It's going to be a total mess. And so far it's been okay, but I don't know what they're doing. In, in Dallas? Mozilla. I'm not doing Mozilla. Okay, she just did a search for Mozilla Firefox and it says like it's not there. How can it not? You just search Firefox. Yeah, she did. I don't know if not getting any clear there. I don't know if I want one of these laptops or not. No, I'm just kidding. Um, go to Google Chrome and see if you can pull up Mozilla Firefox. There it is. Internet Explorer wouldn't let her pull up Firefox. Really? Yeah, because I just I just went to Chrome and put it like that. That's that's censorship. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and load it and then see if you can get on there because that's what I went through here. We're just gonna fix everybody's problems today before we have class. How about that? Anybody got any problems need oh, fixing? <laughs> I can't believe laptops are now going 150 bucks. I can't believe that. But that's good for me. I, I, I'd rather have a laptop any day than a tablet. Yes. I think that might be a problem. Stay up here, just I don't know, see what it does because if you're having the same problem, he says he's having the same problem. When you went through Firefox and you tried to do the site, did you reset your password? No, I didn't. Okay, try. One girl yesterday I went did. reset their password and she put the exact same password in and it worked. Really? She, she didn't change her password at all. She just went through that, forgot your password, and did it, and it sent and reset. And hers worked on here, right? Hers worked, but she's, I think she doesn't have Firefox. I think that might have something to do with it. Yeah. So what you need to do, maybe, try this. Go to the site, hit the forgot your password. Try to log on again, and if it doesn't let you in, hit the forgot your password. Go in and you can change it or not change it if you want to. But go through the process of changing it mm -hmm. and then try to log on to it. I got on there. Oh, you did? Finally, like with oh. Firefox last night. I finally got on. How many tries? Did I mean, do you, do you think you might have been typing in something wrong or do you think? Uh, yeah, that's possible, man. I got so many passwords. I know, I do too. 
you know, try to keep them consistent. But no, with with uh, with Chrome, it just wouldn't open the link at all. Hmm. Well, that so amazes Blackboard. me that Internet Explorer wouldn't even pull up Firefox. That that amazes me. But you know, have you heard in the news that you can go to Google and type in Hillary Clinton, and you can type in this is no joke. They did this on national TV. You could type in Hillary Clinton and type in negative words and it won't come up. But you can go to Yahoo and type up Hillary Clinton with negative words like trial, like Benghazi or whatever, and it won't and it will come up. And Google is censoring what people pull up. That's no joke. They did it on national TV. They did they, they did the same thing with Trump. And Trump, if you type in negative stuff with Trump, it came up in Google. What's wrong? Does it work on the Yeah, I That's it. So it done it in Firefox? Yeah. Yeah, that's the only one I can get to work. It's just another search engine. Just a different browser. Actually, I like it. I like it better in Google. And once I find out this stuff about Google, I don't use Google that much. I use Firefox. I don't like Bing at all. That, that, I don't like Bing at all. But there's different search engines. And it, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. It's a actual, it's legit. Just don't pick a stupid site to download it from. Make sure you type in Mozilla Firefox and make sure this link under the download says Mozilla Firefox. If it says something else, then that's what opens up your problems. Okay, Mozilla Firefox. And make sure it says under www.mozillafirefox.com. Dang, the Joker's in the house. There's a hyena yeah. out there. Did y'all see the last, did y'all see the, the movie, uh, uh, yeah. The Joker sucked. Yeah. I mean, Heath Ledger, Jack Nicholson did a good Joker, but Jack, Jack Nicholson's Joker was a funny Joker. Heath Ledger really de defined that 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 character. I don't think anybody can beat it. Jack Nicholson might good, but. I'm trying to think of any actor that probably could. I don't know what that was in Suicide Squad. Yeah, it felt so long. Oh gosh, and I'm not watching it. My son wants to see it again, but since and I and I I, I was a Fresh Prince. I, I love Will Smith, but I don't like him anymore. After what he said, that he said that the Republican Party needs to be cleansed from the United <laughs> States. <laughs> cleansed? You know the last person to use cleanse was Adolf Hitler? Cleanse. We need to be cleansed. I think our country is just a mess. And Hollywood people, I love I love I love movies. I love movies. But some of these people that live in Hollywood, they live in a different world. They do. They live in a different world. Everything's paid for. They don't have bills. They have people to do stuff for them. And, and what gets me is they make their money off of the capitalistic society that they say is not right. You make money off... That's why I detest... What's his name? DiCaprio. I detest him. Because he rides around in these jets and hollers about climate change. But he rides in a jet that leaves a carbon footprint the size of Manhattan. Hypocrites. It's Bush's fault. Okay, everybody's online now. Let's go and look. Let's go and see if everybody's online. Let's make fun of people who ain't. How's y'all's other teachers? How are they? Mm. Mm. Did y'all go to rate my professor? Let's pull up some people. How about that? It's the end of the week for y'all. Let's pull up some people. 
I will not pull up myself. I'm scared to <laughs> rank my professor. And let's pull up. I told y'all, small class is a fun class. Find the school. Try. County. And somebody give me a last name. Huh? What do they teach? Oh, he's got good ratings, I can tell you that. Yep. He's he's real good. But he ain't gonna put up he ain't gonna treat you like a baby. Oh no. He'll tell you that you need to go home and get a nipple. He will. <laughs> yep, he's a good one. I had never heard anything say anything bad about Corey. I have never Yeah, he's a good one. And he's got a four point six. Anything above a two, two is fair. Three is better. Okay, anything above a three, you pretty much got a chance of passing. Anything below a two, don't you need to drop. Give me another one. I'm sorry, what? Oh, I'm tell you all about that. That's all she does. I have to close my door with my office. Oh my gosh, am I still recording? I hope not. Let me check. Nope, I'm not. Am I? Mm -hmm.